Welcome to PC Mac. Today I'm going to show you how you can go ahead and boot your Raspberry Pi with USB drive or a SSD. Before starting this video, if you like my work, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification for my latest videos. So let's do it. To start the practical, the things that you required is a USB 3.0 flash drive that you need to have because if you're using a 2.0 flash drive, it will not give you that much speed. I have also documented everything on the website so you can check out the document from here. As you can see, I have documented everything here. So first of all, what we need, we need a Raspberry Pi desktop image. So let's just go ahead and open it from here. We need to download the image. So the image that we need is Raspberry Pi 32 bit with desktop version. So we are going to use this image. I have already downloaded the image. The steps are same to flash it to our SD card by using the Etcher or you can uh, use the Raspberry Pi Imager. So let's just go ahead and open it and it's and connect the drive and start the installation. Now once the process complete what we need to do is just click on continue and uh, close it from here and eject the SD card as you can see right here and before ejecting it we can go ahead and enable our SSH from boot so just go to boot and create a file with the name SSH a empty file with the name SSH now we can just take out the SD card and directly plug it to our Raspberry Pi. So just give me a moment. So the card is inserted to Raspberry Pi 4 and I have a 4 GB variant and it's turned on. It might take a moment to just go to the page. Let me just close this window and you can see uh, I have documented everything. Now what we need to do is just minimize this page and open our angry IP scanner to scan the IP address. So let's click on start and uh, it's one millisecond. So let's check this one. Angry IP scanner don't show the name for the device connected. I'll check it on my phone using a tool. The name of the tool is Fing. You can also download it on your Android device and check the IP address through that. So let me just reconfirm the IP address. So it's on 22. Let's just go ahead and start it and uh, we can open our terminal and start typing SSH and 22 and yes and uh, let's put the password. Default password is Raspberry Pi. Let's clear the screen. So the first step that we need to do is sudo apt update. Once the update complete, then we will go ahead and upgrade our Pi and then once the upgrade is finished, then we need to go for the RPI update for the latest firmware downloaded on our Pi. So let's just go ahead and upgrade and uh, it might take some time. So why? Yes, it's need to download 137 MB of archive. So it might take some time. I'll let it be complete and then I'll go for the next step so I'll take you to the website here and you can see sudo rpi update we need to update it by this command and then reboot the system now let's just minimize it and wait it for it to complete it's on 80 percent and it will take a moment so please wait so once the upgrade is finished we'll go ahead and use the command sudo rpi update so let's go ahead and do that and it will take a moment as you can see uh, backing up firmware and relaunching after updates backing up modules and after that it will update it to the latest version so it might take a moment as you can see you can check it from here RPI should only be used if there is a specific reason to do so so let's just press yes and it will start downloading the latest firmware revisions as you can see right here 
and uh, it's around 115 MB so might take some time so please wait let's just go ahead and fast forward the video so as you can see now updating firmware firmware is updated kernel update and DP mode everything is done it might take like 30 more seconds and then it will be rebooted we need to reboot it for the next commands so it's done as you can see a reboot is needed to activate the new firmware so we need to reboot sudo reboot and it's done it's rebooting now now once the reboot is finished what we'll do we'll go ahead and install the XRDP through which we can control our pipe through the same desktop we don't need to switch our ends back forth to the main desktop to Raspberry Pi so we can control it right from here I'll install the XRDP now it will take just uh, just one minute to install it the command is really simple sudo apt install XRDP and that's it so let's just go ahead and uh, do that first of all uh, let's just check let the Pi come back successfully or not so it's on 22 let's enter the password it's done clear the screen and uh, sudo apt install xrdp and that's done now in between it's updating let's copy this command so we need to install rpie p room so it's done let's just move to terminal it might take a moment from here so xrdp is also installed successfully as you can see uh, its progress is 25 percent it will take 20 more seconds and that will be it so the xrdp is successfully installed let's just paste the command and install RPI EEP room so let's yes and enter and you can see it start installing and it's done now let's move back to the document and added this file so right now the firmware release status is critical so we need to change it to beta and that's it as you can see I have mentioned it right here critical updates to beta and that's it and control X and then Y and enter so the update is done let's clear the screen now what we need to do is update the firmware to the beta version copy and paste again it's done and go back here and copy the last command from here paste it here again and so it says EP room update pending so we need to just reboot the system again reboot sorry we need to put sudo now it's rebooting once the reboot is done we can go ahead and check whether the update is done successfully or not and we can also open this software Remina and try to connect 192.168.1.22 that's the IP address of our Raspberry Pi and we can check that we are able to connect communicate to our Pi or not through XRDP and let's go ahead and open the terminal as well try to log in and check so it's up let's log in here and check here as well clear the screen let's try one more time so it's also connect pi and the password default is raspberry so it's done as you can see right here I just need to make some changes here let's leave it as it is minimize the screen so we are on pi prompt let's go to the website again 
and from here we need to check the bootloader version so it will be on the latest one as you can see right here May 15 so it's on May 15 version now what we need to do is we need to check the configuration of bootloader so copy and then paste here and as you can see the boot order right here it's 4 1 4 is for the USB and 1 is for the SD card now RPI will send the request to our USB device first then to the SD card so if a USB device is connected then RPI will be boot from the USB device itself now as you can see everything is done let's clear the screen and what we need to do is just turn off RPI so use sudo power off so it's power off now what we need to do we need a 3.0 flash drive that we can connect to our system and boot the pi from that so let's just go ahead and do that so it would highly recommend you to format your flash drive uh, to fat32 so let's go to disk from here in windows you can do it easily so the device is right here let's go ahead and format it so it's done and uh, let's just go ahead and eject it so if you're not following this step you might see some error messages on your Pi so I'm going to disconnect the drive and connect it to the Pi now and I'm using a 3.0 flash drive and it's connected to a 3.0 port on Pi so the Pi is working let's try to connect to the XRDP from here and check whether it's connected or not so it's connected now what we need to do is click on the Pi icon accessories then go to SD card copier select the first space as our SD card 16 gig and then second one is the ultra and then start it from here and this will erase all the content from our SSD or our flash drive so yes it will take a moment and as you can see preparing partitions copying partition so as you can see it's trying to copy all the data from the SD card to the flash drive so it will take a time let's fast forward the video and I will be right back so once this step is successfully completed as you can see copy complete we just need to click on ok close and then try to shut down the computer from here will not take the command from XRDP so we'll go ahead and do that from here so let's go ahead and log in again SSH pi at 192.160 we are already in pi so let's go ahead and sudo power off and it's done the power off is finished once the power cycle completes you just need to turn off the power supply and then disconnect the SD card from your Pi and then turn it on and check whether it's able to boot from your USB device or not either it's a flash drive or SSD let's check let me just go ahead and turn off my Pi from the power source and take out the SD card now the SD card is out from my Pi and it's only connected through the flash drive of a 32 gig so let me just turn it on now the Pi is turned on and uh, let me just wait for a while and try to connect first of all with Remina and check whether we are able to connect or not and let's try with SSH as well so as you can see we are able to SSH our Pi that means it's boot successfully let's clear the screen and uh, let's check Remina as well let's just close it it's not able to communicate with Pi try it one more time and as you can see we are right here and this is the flash drive and now I'll tell you a bonus step that you can do if this step will not work what you can do is uh, you just need to plug the SD card to your computer with the same flash drive on which we did all the steps so this flash drive is connected to my system let's go to files and then uh, go to boot 
from here what you need to do is you need to copy all the ELF files that starts from here you can see these three four five six seven eight eight of these ELF files and then these dot DAT files one two three four five six seven eight so eight of these files and eight of the ELF files you need to copy these file to your flash drive in case it fails to boot from the USB drive you can just go ahead and copy these file to your USB drive and then check it again it will definitely boot from the USB now that's it for today uh, you can use it on your Pi and boot it from a flash drive or SSD and it will work faster and give you a better performance and you can find out all the details in the document right here I have already mentioned everything here and you can go ahead and check this out if you're facing any problem you can write me on my official telegram chat I'll try to help you you can go ahead and subscribe to our channel and if you like my work you can also buy me a coffee right from the website so guys that's it if you like my work please hit the like button subscribe to our channel and press the bell notification for our latest video share this video with your family and friends thank you for watching bye bye take care have a nice day